The problem we will be solving can be found in Sears and Szymanski's University Physics with Modern Physics, 12th edition, page 176, problem 5.94. 5.94 accelerometer. The system shown in figure 5.76 can be used to measure the acceleration of the system. An observer riding on the platform measures the angle theta that the thread supporting the light ball makes with the vertical. There is no friction anywhere. A. How is data related to the acceleration of the system? B. If M1 equals 250 kilograms and M2 equals 1250 kilograms, what is data? C. If you can vary M1 and M2, what is the largest angle data you could achieve? Explain how you need to adjust M1 and M2 to do this. So now let's proceed with part A of the problem. How is data related to the acceleration of the system? Here I have a portion of the system that I drew. And the reason I drew a portion of the system is because, as the problem says, there is no friction anywhere. This implies the acceleration is the same both for this mass, this mass, this other mass also that's around the pulley, and the ball. These all have the same acceleration because there is no friction anywhere. Okay, we will now implement Newton's second law of motion to solve this problem. I have here the ball. And this ball, of course, has a force acting on it, which is the tension of this thread right here, which we're going to draw right now, okay? We're going to draw it right here. And we're going to denote this tension T. Of course, this thread is making an angle with the vertical, which is this one here, which is theta. We have another force which is acting from the center of gravity down, okay, which is of course the weight of the ball. Okay, you have the little arrow putting down here. So the arrow putting that way, okay? And this is called the mass of the ball times the acceleration due to gravity. Okay? This is the weight of the ball coming from the center of gravity. These are the two forces acting on the ball. Now, if we decompose this tension into its horizontal and vertical components and then choose a coordinate system, which will serve us as our reference guide, we can, of course, indeed solve this problem. Okay? So, notice that these two blue arrows I am drawing these are the X and Y components, okay? I'm going to choose this one to be X, this one to be Y, okay? This is my X, this is my Y. You can choose your coordinate system how you wish. Now, of course, if this force is being broken up to these components, and the sum of these two forces is equal to this tension, you have to disregard this one, okay? Now, of course, we will have a component of tension in the x and y direction. We will denote those components Tx and Ty. Okay? Since this is the x component, this x right here, this side, this component of tension is opposite to this angle. Okay? And opposite to an angle, you can remember that's given by the sign. So if we multiply the magnitude of this force, of this tension, by the sign of this angle, we will get this projection of the force opposite to the angle, which is, of course, going to be in the x direction. So it will be T sine of data. T sine of data. That's the tension, the component of tension in the x direction. So the component of tension in the y direction will be multiplying the magnitude T, tension T, by the cosine of the angle. Of course, it's going to give us the adjacent projection to the angle of course and this adjacent is parallel to the y-axis so this will be our y component t cosine data okay this is just basic trigonometry which you can review before solving this type of vector problem okay 
So now that we have TX and TY, now we're gonna implement Newton's second law in the x and y direction. We're gonna do the sum of the forces in the x direction, okay? Equals, okay, now in the x direction, how many forces do we have in the x direction? Well, we have this force going to towards the positive x direction. So, of course, this would be a t sine data equals to mass of the ball times the acceleration of the ball. Okay? So, now the sum of the forces here in the y direction is equal. If we choose up to be positive and down negative, that means up will be positive. That means t cosine data will be positive. Let's put it right here. T cosine data minus, well, this force is directed downward, so it will be negative, and it will be mass of the ball times the acceleration to the gravity. Since this ball is not acceleration, is not accelerating in the y direction, it's not accelerating up or down, the sum of the forces is zero. There is no acceleration. This object will remain at rest relative to the y direction. We have two equations here, which we can algebraically manipulate in order to see what relation does that angle have with the acceleration. So we will proceed here. We know that T sine data, we discovered that T sine data equals the mass of the ball times the acceleration of the ball. We also saw that T cosine data minus the mass of the ball times the acceleration of the gravity, which these two multiply will give the weight. This T cosine data will give us the component of tension in the y direction equals zero. There is no acceleration in that direction. Solving algebraically, here in the second equation, we call this equation one, equation two. Solving algebraically in the second equation, we have that T cosine data is equal to the mass of the ball times the acceleration of the gravity. Okay? If this equation is true and this equation is true, that means the quotient of those equations is also true. So let's take the quotient of T sine data equals the mass of the ball times the acceleration of the, ground, um, of the system, I'm sorry. And we're going to divide it by T cosine data, which is equal to the mass of the ball times the acceleration of the ground. Okay? We're going to divide these two. As I said, if this one is true and this one is true, the quotient of them is true. The reason we want the quotient of them is because we do not know the tension. There is no way we can solve for the tension unless other data is given. And at the same time, we're not interested in the tension. We're interested in the angle data related to the acceleration A of the system. We take the quotient of these two, T and T cancel on the left side. The mass of the ball and the mass of the ball cancel on the right side. So what we're left with, sine over cosine, which is a trigonometric identity of tangent of the angle data, is equal to A over G, okay? A over G. So the angle is related by this expression here. Tangent of data is equal to the acceleration of the system divided by the acceleration due to gravity. And we can solve the acceleration due to the system, of the system, we can, of course, find that angle data. So let's move on. We already found, we already solved the first part of the problem, part A. How is data related to the acceleration? Well, data is related to the acceleration by tangent of data is equal to the acceleration of the system divided by the acceleration due to gravity. Okay? So now we will go with part B, which says, if M1 equals 250 kilograms, M, M2 equals 1,250 kilograms. What is data? Okay, what is data? Okay, so what I'm going to draw here is a free body diagram. A free body diagram here. Okay, of the platform. Okay, we're going to draw this quick because, of course, we know we are on a time limit. Okay. 
case, we in that portion. We really don't care. What we really care about is the forces acting on the platform, okay? Of course, we have the weight coming down from the center of gravity towards the center of the Earth. We will call this mass 2. As you know the mass 2, we will call it big capital M, okay? Because it's, of course, bigger than the other mass. We have the normal force, which is normal to the surface. We have these two forces. We have the tension T. This other tension, we call it T2. This is a different tension. T2, we will call it. Okay? Now, if you apply the second law, we have the sum of the forces in the X and Y direction. Okay? This is my X, this is my Y. So that means everything moving towards the right will be positive. So I have that T2 equals big M and A. Now, F, F Y, N, which is the normal force, minus, well, the mass times, of course, the acceleration of the gravity will give us that weight. Mg equals zero. Okay, we have these two equations. T2 is the only force acting in the x direction, that means it's equal to mass times acceleration. In the y direction, there is no acceleration, so we set that equal to zero. So now we will draw a free body diagram for mass one. We will denote a little m. This little m, this force coming from the center of gravity, is going to be little mg. This is, of course, going to be tension T. Okay? Now, there is only one direction here where the forces are acting. Of course, this is going to be the Y direction. We said that everything moving towards the right is going to be positive. So that means this is also positive. Okay? This is positive. And this is negative. So, and, of course, this is T2. I'm sorry. So what we have now is negative T2 plus little mg equals ma. Let's solve for a algebraically. So to solve for a algebraically, we will have, since t2 equals ma, we can substitute this t2 over here for minus t2, and we have now ma, well, minus ma, plus little mg equals ma, little ma. This equation, we're going to write it down, put it in the next page. Minus M A plus, sorry, minus M A plus M G equals little M A. Now, I'm going to add on both sides big M A. So I will have on my left side little M G equals little M A plus big M A. On the right side factoring I have A factorized little m plus big M. On the left side I have little m g. Solving for A algebraic I will divide both sides by the sum of M and big M. So I have the acceleration of the system is of course M G divided by little m plus M. Okay? And we saw that the tangent of data, we saw that the tangent of data, we write it right here, right under it, that the tangent of data was equal to the acceleration divided by the acceleration of the gravity. Solving this equation here algebraically, we have that A will be equal also to G multiplied by the tangent of data. G multiplied by the tangent of data. Simplifying, we have that this G cancels out. This G here also cancels out. And now we can solve for the angle data. We will take the arc tangent of M. We'll take the arc tangent of M1 divided by M2 plus M1. Okay? The arc tangent of this quantity here will tell you what is that angle data and of course we will proceed with part C in the next video